How's it going, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Woo. So, last time, we kicked off case four, and we have met with our defendant, whose name is Soski Natsume. He's a fellow Japanese, which is nice for the Nosuke and Susato, because everybody else here is British. So yeah, uh, we're just going to continue our investigation to Briar Road. Here we go. 19 February, Briar Road. Wow, you did it right for once. <laughs> I know, I'm so proud of myself. Snowman! <laughs> so this is where it happened, Briar Road. <gasps> Look, Mr. Nadaro. Shut up. Okay. It's a dude. <laughs> Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. I know, I'm pretty hot. Not you. The men of Scotland Fuck Yard you. are here. They're investigating as we speak. Where's the bitch? <laughs> that is their job, you know. But Mr. Nanoro, to see one with my own eyes. They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt it'd become this close. What the fuck did I just say? <laughs> to a real Bobby's helmet. I feel like your shading is a little off. To the rest of the background. <laughs> What did you she's just so, say? She's so bright <laughs> compared to everything else. She is in very the background. bright. She she's wearing very bright clothing though. So that is true. What uh, the helmet? The the, the helmet. Hehe. <laughs> of course. I have to try one on to on one day. Well, I hope your Hattie dream comes true. I actually hope it doesn't. Hey you! Give me your fucking oh helmet! Oh my fucking god! What's the Japanese delegation doing here? What's the ugly fuck doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson! Shut up! Oh my god. <laughs> Shut! This isn't the tourist trail. I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Die. Yes, of course! We are here to investigate. Well, if I'm down, you're coming with me, bitch. <laughs> so you've been to the holding cells, then? What do you make of the criminal? Pretty fucking dumb. Do you ever eat anything else? No. He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. I actually have a condition where I can only eat fish and chips. <laughs> and the paper that well, comes in them. Well, we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. What does that even mean? I've never actually been to Japan myself, so I don't know how I'm making these uh, assumptions. <laughs> well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh, stone Cold Air of Rejection. I was rejected once. Yeah? No one asked. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of stone cold air. That makes it worse somehow. Can you like <laughs> fuck off? <laughs> Hello. This patch of pavement must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true. I can't see anywhere an attacker could have been hiding. Or what are you foreigners doing here? Oh my god, it's you. Oh, uh, uh, we, uh, uh just about getting the scene, officer. That's probably what that mustache fellow from Japan, are you? <laughs> Conspiring? Come here to destroy evidence, have you? Bobby? Get out of here before <laughs> I give you an What? Go on. Go on. Go on, then. He shoot us away like rats. Damn, he shot me. Yes. <laughs> you should give him a wide berth, I think. I have a wide girth. What a disappointing experience. I teleported back. Oh, but you're still gonna talk to me anyway. <laughs> That's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapped in irons. Or clapped. I think perhaps you're being a little overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Okay, well we're in London, so that's your first mistake. Oh no, I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what's going on. Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure it's that wide-eyed look of panic you're so prone, bleh, prone to. <laughs> it does you no favors at all. <sighs> Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that's a Scotland Yard carriage. It sure is. 
They use vehicles like that to rush to crime scenes and cart away crim criminals. Criminals. <laughs> You're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride in one of those on the streets of London. Well, I'll just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows then. <laughs> but that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. That's the point. Well, wouldn't it? Still, if it's the only way, help me find a good stone. No, 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 I wasn't serious. Idiot. Well, I am. Hee <laughs> hee. What a delightful snowman. Yeah, I'm gonna knock its whole head off. No! I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. Looks like a little... bitch. <laughs> oh, it has a scarf. Look! You'd need one if you were out in this freezing cold all the time. I wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. We certainly can't afford a scarf, so we'll take yeah. this one. That's a pretty funny joke. Surely... The snowman here wouldn't miss this. His. But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Stop reading my damn thoughts. Yes, <laughs> I know. You're right. Anyway. Even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. But <laughs> Didn't mean you that. Hello. What a fucked up bike. <laughs> Oh, a British bicycle, look! Although, the wheel is so misshapen, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be ridden anymore. Wow, that bike is built like me. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles have become extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dress to allow them to ride as well. Well, I'm gonna go put my mouth over that chimney in the back, be right back. <laughs> what? No! The bicycle fire won't last. I don't see why anyone would want to ride something like that. Goodness, do you dislike bicycles? Yeah, I'm a tricycle kind of guy. No, yeah. not at all. I mean, it's not that I dislike them exactly. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both your feet off firm ground seems reckless. If you'd ever tried walking on stilts and fallen into a river, I know you'd agree with me. I'll have to hire a bicycle sometime. You can sit behind me while I ride you around. Yeah. It's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long, interesting history. Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll on the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. In fact, it looks decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. We must find some cheap lodgings ourselves in order to, uh, as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. Cheap, but ideally with reasonable level floors. With reasonably level floors. Oh, look at the windows of that building there. Sus. Are you sure they're windows? Yes, but they're all filled in with bricks. Oh, you're right! I wonder why. Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment. There's smoke coming from the chimneys, though. The window tax. <laughs> oh dear, everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this place. Well, the clouds look so big and heavy in the sky, don't they? And with the dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. Well... It is known as Foggy London Town. I could just make out some sort of spire through the fog. It looks like it's still being built, though. Aha! Yes! That must mean the, be the Crystal Tower being built for the exhibition. Great exhibition that's open to fucking six months' time! Apparently it's going to be very striking. Glazed on all sides, and the symbolic centerpiece of the exhibition. This would be the largest exposition in history, is it? <laughs> I can't even begin to imagine it. Why are you copping to me? <laughs> copping to me? Wait, did I miss him? <laughs> Road. For These some reason, I have the urge there. to, like, look for hint coins, even though this isn't a Professor Layton game. Oh, yeah. But the road itself is covered in carriage tracks. It seems carriages often travel down Briar Road. It soon disperses all the snow. Yeah. I slipped over <laughs> when I was walking down the pavement earlier, busting my ass. That's seems funny. like it would be far safer to walk on the road instead. Oh, but you are rather small, Mr. Nanaho, and dressed all in black. I worry coachmen might not see you, and you could be flattened by horses. 
Well, thank you for the rather small concern. You are small. I'm a small, am I? <laughs> There's a small written. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the adventures of Sherlock... Herlock Sholmes, <laughs> I've been fascinated by the place. <sighs> the Yard is the most sophisticated police and organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. Yeah, that's great, Missy. I don't give a fuck about your dreams. <laughs> Tell to someone who cares. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. Oh, yes. Doesn't he look wonderful? No, I could take him in a fight. <laughs> Bringing a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? Yes. First thing in the morning, you know what he does. Goes round and rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep, wraps on their windows with a long pole. And myself go back a bit. Sucked ass. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, yeah, I hated every second of my life. Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 20 miles. That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my. And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well? And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. I expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men keeling over from time to time, I admit. I'd always dreamed of... Dreamed? <laughs> I've always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Nanoro. <laughs> no. Your heavy heart will be in my heavy head if you do. What? It will be my heavy <sighs> I'm head. I'm gonna punch you. your heavy, heavy head. Your heady head. head. <laughs> God, your heady you two head are so head. annoying. It happened around five in the evening, two days ago. Just there on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. What? what? Truth is, unless she comes round pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area I happen to have on me. You can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's your policy to give lawyers to find its suspects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Yeah, because you're gonna friggin' need it. <laughs> anyway, as far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know that Mr. Natsumi is also claiming to not have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can't be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to, to tell you, but we most certainly can't be sure. How? Because, ma'am, the precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It... it what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah. It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see him. There are witnesses now? Oh my god. Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife, and the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens of all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah. Is that all you could say? Ah. <laughs> uh, a policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? 
Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a puppy. Catching them in the bang in the act of what? Catching them bang in the act <laughs> and all that. You know, they're banging all the time. Catch them banging. Uh, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Are you fucking dumb? <laughs> Bring my guest, you can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I have no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So, that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the main bef man beforehand, it seems. A policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned me about that too. Baby, baby. Baby. Oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. The sussy. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Holmes. Do not ever mention that man to me again. What are you bringing him up for? Time for my breakdown. <laughs> I'm gonna go insane. I'm a psychopath. I'm a fucking psychopath. Is that something I said? The color is drained from his cheeks. I would kill to see what um, fucking Gregson's uh, pocket looks like that he keeps putting his fish and chips in. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Rums probably everywhere. horrifying. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, uh, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Sholmes' inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle. The fuck did you just call me? <laughs> the man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of a crime. Wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. <laughs> Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He... he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble guy. What? <gasps> Ever seen this before? Oh, yes. That's Rance Mag the Rancid Magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Sholmes appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in his stories. And the so-called great detectives make a mockery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any of Herlock Sholmes' tales at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to be thrumped by public thanks to that obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us at Scotland Yard as he is to all of our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Have you literally met this man? Maybe the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. That twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, uh... No? Okay, I'll tell <laughs> Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer wants his soul will touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean? There's no way to save the man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. The only people he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals. The violent ones. The master criminals? The... the violent ones? That's right. He unpacks his victims, only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Nasman wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely? That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into, for want of a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, there's got to be more to it some reason he's taken an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? These nuts. You think I could tell what's going on inside the head of that horde of darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself, at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he put it? Thank God, we're finally done. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Bye. Mr. 
Mr. Nanaholo, can I make a suggestion? No. <laughs> anyway. Okay, fair. Oh, yes, what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. No. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Ew. <laughs> Look at those shining eyes. Can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Nasmi did blame Mr. Sholmes for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you just going to ignore that? I hope not. I kind of want I to. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. The trouble is, we have no idea of the man's address, even. It's Ta Baker Street! How do you know that? I stalked it. Uh, I mean, I looked it up. It's in the stories, of course. 221B Baker Street. The most famous address in the world. Sounds dumb. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We we're trying to find our way there before Susato Sun gets any more excited and unpredictable. She might assault that officer. Hurrah! I'll summon a carrot. A carrot? Th did so I say carrot? Already. No, you didn't. Oh, okay. With the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I really don't want to. No. Can you leave? Oh my god. Boop, 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 boop. Can I show you this? Oh, okay. I think it's the same thing. Symbol of their profession. In other words, there's a worthless trinket here in Great Britain. Oh no, it's very important. It's my spirit. I'm gonna crush I'll it. I'll your spirit dies. Keep his spirit to himself, you know. Oh. <laughs> Don't give up, Mr. Nadado. It's too late. He's crushed my spirit already. Damn. Yeah, I'm gonna crush your face next. Oh god. New location. Oh, pinch me. I think I must be dreaming. <laughs> Pinches the shit out of you. There we go, low res. <laughs> They're so tiny. <laughs> I think this game just flips them out. Oh my god. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Fuck Goodbye. you. Thanks again. Wow. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Shows. Looks like shit. Get off my fucking porch. <laughs> Ew, who's that? Is that a male and a female? Ew. Ew, nasty. Get out. That's crazy. Is that a knife? 19th February, 12.53 p.m. Shows his suite. So this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be in here somehow. Ew, get out of my room. What the fuck? I'm going insane. Is it described is it as described in the stories, Mr. Sato? I'm turning into the Joker. Yeah. Uh Sato san <laughs> Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Didn't ask. Oh, I I suppose they must have been. Yes. I never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down on the unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it! The romanticism! Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? No. Can't you, Mr. Nadaro? No. <laughs> oh, I suppose I can, yes. So, if you don't mind... I will be turning this way. I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please, leave me alone. Don't mind me. <laughs> Who the fuck is this in my house? Hello. Uh, she's obsessed. Well, looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anybody home? Uh, is that oh, supposed to- Do we have a visitor? Yeah. Ah. Hello? Is it a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Uh, hello. Wait, aren't you? Oh, how rude of me. I'll go make some tea at once. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Go get my tea. Excuse me? I'm sure it's the same girl. Mr. Sato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Sholmes to take on his case. The... the King of Bowaria? King Wilhelm Godstreet... Sig... Godstreet... Sigmund von Ormstein. Of course. Of course. Wilhelm Godstreet. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Did you even speak words to me? Forget the adventures of Herlock Sholmes for a moment and look over there. It's a girl. The tea is brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Give it to me. Put it in my mouth. <gasps> it's you! I knew it. Sato-san recognizes her too. Ah, there you are. Tie to tie. I'm taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. <laughs> Gina just blasted her. The no, I girl who turned up this. at the end of Mr. McKillen's trial in the Venice antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to get straight to work when you've only just arrived in London. Oh, uh, yes, it was challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. I put poison in it. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? It looks like lighter fluid. It is. Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Sato, it's gasoline. It's piss. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here, and you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh, and you're to defend the Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Uh... Did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley? Mr. Sholmes to you, surely. Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that had brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, but even though he's just returned from overseas, I don't know why I added <laughs> the butt there. I will say, the one thing I like about the fan translation, I liked Holmesy more than her. I know, I movie. liked Holmesy a lot. Wait a minute. I met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point. Why is she here in Mr. Holmes' suite? Oh, silly me! I haven't introduced myself, have I? Oh. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Watson. Wilson, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I live here together with Hurley. Illegal. You changed Illegal. your... You said the wrong name. I did. Uh, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? Wh what's the matter? No, wait. This... This can't be. Did... Did you... Did you say that your... Your name is... Wilson? What's the matter with Susato-san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Are you stupid or something? Yes, that's right. And what's your names? Oh, uh... I'm Ryunosuke Naruhodo, a lawyer from Japan. And this is Bitch. No, oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Nanaro's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely, Susie and Runo. Got it. Susie. And Runo! <laughs> more to this girl that meets the eye. I have so many questions for her. I don't know where to be start. Yes, and so do I. No. Time to look at all the things. <laughs> Looks like that huge metal chest is being used as a table for tea and coffee. It seems very sturdy, with an equally sturdy lock. Mr. Naroto, you mustn't go around opening things. Too bad. I always have to keep an eye on you, don't I? You're always very mischievous. 
You're always, always a very mischievous. Always. <laughs> I don't think I added the A. I knew I added the always. Did I add A? You did. Damn it. How did you come to that conclusion? Ooh, that chest. Contains some of my most valuable things. And that smile tells me you're not going to tell us uh, any clue what they are. I'm going to jump in here. I do like this fireplace. It's one of the best things I've seen since we arrived at the country, in fact. Lingering beside the fire and watching the flames flicker and dance in the gate. Great. Uh, it's so relaxing. We can't relax. No one... Not... Not when there are so many not, interesting things in the mental piece. <laughs> you made her sound British in the beginning. I know. It's because I'm switching between... Like, I'm using the same register for those two. One's British, though. So I'm like, oh... <laughs> Oh, it's just as it was described in the stories. It is? Yes, exactly. Inside that Persian slipper, for example. All my chocolates full elf. Eleven. El what the what? fuck? Eleveness? Elevenses? I'm transfixed by that large jackknife. It's my shopping list for the market. What are we talking about, guys? Oh, it's. Not quite how I remember it being described in the adventure of Sherlock Holmes. Her Herlock fucking Sholmes! <laughs> Poor Susato-san, she looks crushed. It's so funny. A mystery shoe, a curious hammer, some mysterious dancing man, and a bust of Napoleon. Ah, what an entrancing collection. It's the first time in my life that I've seen the lowly shoe di displayed as an ornament. Oh, those are all mementos that Hurley has collected over his past cases. Really? Even the bust? Yes, that's right. When the mood takes him, he likes to throw it on the floor and smash it to dust. Poor defenseless emperor. Mr. Sholmes destroys it. Yes, and he buys it, then he buys a new one. You make it sound like he has the temperament of an insane sculptor. Ah, how entrancingly bohemian of him. Okay. All right. Okay, then. There's all sorts on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high, I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. I keep telling Hurley not to cram so much on those shelves. Good advice. He wanted to look something up on one of those books a while ago. It was so tightly wedged in, he couldn't get it out. So he went and bought a new copy instead. Huh. Uh, I see. Damn. So much shit. What on earth is this huge, over-the-top machine? That's the great an an analytoscope. It can analyze anything, really. Anything at all. That's... That's absolutely incredible. Eh, yeah, four out of ten. <laughs> it's one of Hurley's inventions. It took him a whole year. He said it would help it with him uh, with fucking investigations. What sort of things has he analyzed with it? Do you know? Well, actually, he hasn't used it for anything yet. Oh. Why not? Apparently, on the evening he finally completed it, it suddenly occurred to him. I don't actually have anything I need to analyze. <laughs> oh dear. How about you, Runo? Do you have anything you'd like to analyze? My not. The only okay. thing that springs to mind is this machine itself. So much stuff. Fuck. <laughs> ah, I've seen pictures of Western musical instruments like this. It's called a violin, isn't it? Of course it is. Mr. Sholmes is renowned for his violin playing. Oh, really? Absolutely. It's often explained in the stories. It's inspirational, Mr. Narado. Inspirational. Violin. Having Omori flashbacks. Oh, no. I immediately started playing the koto, which was the closest Japanese stringed instrument I could find. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen our Omori Let's Play, you should totally watch it, because it is very, very good. You should totally watch it. It's super wholesome and not at all sad. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> what a shame you didn't couldn't bring bling it. What a shame you couldn't bring it with you to London. Oh, 
Yes. Well, Papa was beaming when I asked him he would, or when I asked him if he would buy me one. But after a while, he asked if I would only practice when he was out of the house. So now it's merely an ornament in my room. That must have been an awkward conversation. Why? Why are there all those bullet holes on the wall <laughs> up there? Was Mr. Sholmes trying to shoot a pestery fly or something? Mr. Sholmes would never do something so reckless. No. He super would. <laughs> those are the letters VR, standing for Victoria Regina. It's Latin for Queen Victoria. So you mean he shot the queen into the wall? In a moment of boredom, Mr. Sholmes has adorned the wall with a patriotic sign. That's all. As a pistol practice. As pistol practice. <laughs> right. That makes perfect sense now. It's exactly as it's described in the stories. Oh, this is delightful. I'm not sure that the real explanation is any less reckless than shooting a fly, personally. It's patriotic, Mr. Narado. Patriotic. No, it's not. <laughs> Still more. What a beautiful English tea set. So neatly arranged. It's a favorite pastime of mine, and a cup of herbal tea in the afternoon. Piss in the evening. Tea. <laughs> Made of herbs? That's right. I grow all sorts of orbs. Uh, orbs? Orbs. <laughs> orbs. In the garden, and I can experiment with different blends. One moment, don't go away. I'll brew a pot of the special blend I came up with earlier today. She looks delighted. I only really hope it's safe to drink. Did she mean to make that rhyme? I don't know. Ah, that's my blackboard where I write down note ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Note ideas. Let's see. You know. Black Peter. Peter, Peter? the Pistar. Peter the Pistar. What does that mean? Discord joke. For those of you who don't ha, understand. Ha, ha. Discord joke. Anyway. Don't you want to hear what the Iris has to say, Mr. Nadado? I'll come back to that blackboard later. That's a charming little white shawl. Full of charming little bottles, too. Oh, yes. But don't touch any of those. They'll kill you. <laughs> they might explode. Awesome. I'm going to do it right now. Explode? Are they exotic chemicals? Do you use them for exciting experiments? Yes, indeed. And as Hurley always says, chemistry is an explosive science. Sorry? Chemistry is an explosive science. <clears throat> I agree. A single discovery can trigger an explosion of innovation all around the world. Or perhaps he just meant it literally. Either way, mental note, do not touch any bottle that belongs to Iris. <laughs> what on earth is that big black lump over there? Oh, that's fascinating. Wait, that's a fascinating thing called a typewriter. Paul is online. <laughs> it's a machine that allows you to write on paper without needing a pen. And wizardly quick, too. And wizardly quick. Interesting. Wizardly. Oh, it sounds like it'd be very useful for someone like me with terrible handwriting. So true, bestie. What the fuck? I think that is everything. Hell yeah. Jesus Christ, that was There's a lot so of stuff. There's so much stuff in here. There is. It was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the Old Bailey. Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh no, not at all. I am so sorry we could not have been more welcoming. Though at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Oh, Christ. L like this? Oh, wait, wow, like this? Yeah. Gold. Ah, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh, yes, that was awkward. The awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. <laughs> that was awkward. Oh, Ginny? Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. Ginny. See, also in the fan translation, I like Jean Bean. Jean Bean was so freaking cute. <laughs> so we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. 
Are you referring to that trial disrupting gun like contraption? Exactly. So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Uh huh. Hmm. Perhaps I should think about fitting a self destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Ginny back here after that. So she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock. Herlock Shorms. We live here together. I... I had no idea the great detective has such a... interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you found the lodgings of any kind in London are expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? One. <laughs> I'm negative five. Ten at least, uh, at last this year. Well, what of your mother and father? Dead. Oh no, they're not around. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Oh yes, there's something I must ask you. No. Of course, of course. Go right ahead, Susie. I am very... Oh wait, I am a very great fan of... The Adventures of Harlock Jones, and... Oh, you have a copy of Ranst Magazine. Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on the ship. What's your fascination with us, bitch? No, what's your fascination with me, bitch? Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's right. Hurley is always solving such amazing cases, you see. And he tells me about them all the time. They really are quite fascinating. What? <laughs> I said you rewrote the line. Ah, uh, you're right, I did. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard of them, don't you think? Goodness. Last night, he was telling me all about the new case he'd solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you... you are the author? Yes, I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm going to call the latest adventure The Speckled Band. Well, it's like the name of the second case. Whoa, Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always changed one or two details in the story. Here and there. Wait, why did I do that? Here or there? Here. Here or there. This time, I had an idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, that was Mr. Holmes' first thought as well, actually. Yes, and of course I know that the snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... It's a story! Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think, don't you? What? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories about Mr. Sholmes that are published in the Ranst magazine? All written by me? Yes, on my wonderful, very modern typewriter. But, but all the stories I've ever read... ...are written by a doctor of medicine. Dr. John H. Wilson. So that sounds getting more and more worked up. Yeah, it's all fake. Ah, uh, yes, that's me. I mean, my name's really Wilson. But, but what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too. I am a doctor of medicine. No, at ten years old? At ten years old. You're lying to me. Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, but... Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman! Ah, uh, yes. I did alter the setting slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it 
It sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow. I suppose it does, yes. Poor Susato-san. She looks like her whole world just got fallen apart. I added a word. <laughs> Alright, let me see something real quick. Pretty sure you can get an achievement here. I can't remember. Yeah, see. It's unhighlighted again. Ah, that's my blackboard where I do Black this thing. Ooh. How intriguing! Iris' latest work. What a fantastic tale. It looks like an angel. I bet you've dreamed of the most grisly crime scene you've ever imagined. It's a case that Early solved just recently. A black cat called Peter went missing in the neighborhood. Early tracked it down at the fishmongers in the end. Well, I can't wait for the story to be published. Sounded disappointed there. Haha. <laughs> Make sure I didn't miss any animals. Oh yeah, look at that. There we go. See pictures of violin. Of course it is, shit. Oh really? Hell yeah, that's right. She slipped, oh, she slipped in. You did what, Iris? I didn't really give it a lot of thought and just started to add it to the stories. Yes, Mr. Shams' exceptional violin playing has been mentioned a number of times. But the truth is, Hurley had barely touched the violin in his life up to that point. Oh. <laughs> of course, people started to ask him to play up for, wait, play for them after my stories published. And he wasn't even able to tell them that he didn't know how. What did he do? He went straight to the pawn shop and bought himself a very nice violin. And then he practiced. He practiced until his fingers nearly dropped off. Must be why he's so highly strong. Before I knew it, he'd become a rather... <laughs> he'd become a rather good. The greatness of the de great detective really shone with that experience, I think. It was a great deception, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, about before? No. Yes? Yes? What's on your mind, Runo? Do tell me. How did you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Iris Wilson is proud to present Her Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. What? Whoa! First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runa. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the Defendant's Antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh. So I was reasonably confident that you must only have just arrived in the country. I didn't realize you would look at my breasticle chesticle. <laughs> Here we are. I was looking at your titties. <laughs> and on top of that... Hello. You accepted a case against that particular prosecutor. Telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Bailey. I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with the suspect, weren't you? Earlier today? Huh? They use those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. I... I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So, that told me even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, the two of you had already caused a visit, wait, had caused to visit foreign inmates at local prisons. However, neither of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face. So I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. 
that led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I... I see. But how could you have known that that was the trial for tomorrow? Fucking balls! Hi. <laughs> well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Harry solved yet another case. It's obviously <laughs> amused him, so he told me he had caught a Japanese man who was bowling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, that clearly must have been... Yeah. Mr. Natsume! Now, Runo has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called the kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided that you two must be defending the Japanese man, Hurlicott. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. Damn. There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Hurley is always stabbing his notes with a knife, you see. You know, <laughs> he is silly. Quite silly. Quite silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. Oh, well, except yours was actually good. Yeah, I know, right? Wow, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? No. They were spot on. That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You even managed to certain something of Mr. Shum's delivery. Oh, well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is really very good news. You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? Please. Damn. D damn So yesterday, Mr. Shom's apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying. Yes. Harley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, uh, great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently a woman was stabbed in a quiet street somewhere in town. Town? There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man. This... Mr. Natsume, not beyond mine. any doubt. Sosuke-san did say that you didn't see anybody else on the street at all. It seems there were witnesses, after all. Harry used his great detective powers to determine the man's address. It was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did they find? A short, shifty-looking, stooped man shivering in fear. Ugh, Mr. Shum's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did. He's a great detective. Have you seen any of his other deductions? Because they were all shit. <laughs> Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Hurley says that London's rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear, I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why I can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. They can't, not me. <laughs> Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. That's terrible. That's funny. Hmm? I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest juice justice <laughs> system. Uh, uh. I suppose it is. But in that case, I don't hold out much hope for Sosuke san. Man is screwed. So true. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guess, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Or is he just fucking off somewhere? Oh, well. I expect Hurley to still invest... Is still investigating the scene. You know? Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? 
Yes, Mr. Natsume. Hurley said he was going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? No. Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Uh, yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, oh, goody! In that case... Give Gregsy this for me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five-shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. Well... It reads, tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that there won't be a problem. Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. Uh, we'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript, The Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea. So come back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Narado, it's time to get back to the crime scene. I super changed the line. Cause fuck you. So, somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland or at all. We headed back to the sea with Iris's curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. To be continued. To be Despite only being in two locations, that was long. I know, right? I was like, oh my gosh, so much speaking. <laughs> All right. Woo. <sighs> so, this looks like a perfect place to wrap it up. So, next time on the Great Ace Attorney Adventures, we're going to go to Natsumi's lodgings and also probably talk with Herlock and the inspector. So, as always, if you all want to support this series, give it some love, you know what to do. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you all in the next in episode. In the next episode.